Half a decade ago, when I began making videos on YouTube, and yes, this summer does mark five years that I've been on YouTube, which is absolutely unreal, one of the many themes of my videos back then were my cell phone collection. In 2008 and 2009, I made videos of my entire collection as a whole, and I made videos of all the individual cell phones as I got them. And then I kind of fell out of it, and uh, the only reasons I can think of for falling out of this interest is, well, first of all, my other interests kind of took over, and second of all, I kind of lost focus of what uh, my cell phone collection was supposed to be. My collection was originally supposed to be a vintage Motorola collection, and in the end, it kind of just turned into a slightly old Nokia collection, because that's all I found at yard sales, and uh, I thought nothing of getting them anyway. So in the end, I just kind of racked up a bunch of slightly old Nokias and a few vintage Motorolas, and, uh, and I didn't really see the point anymore, so I just stopped completely. For the first time in, gosh, I guess four years, that interest has uh, arisen again. I've decided to uh, try and resume this very old interest that I had. And there were a couple of reasons I decided to do this. Um, I've never completely fallen out of the interest because I've always, you know, I've always been watching videos of vintage cell phones on YouTube from uh, great people on YouTube such as Pamper Chew. But uh, just recently I discovered I've been looking for something like this for years and have never been able to find one. But uh, I accidentally came across a video on YouTube of a wonderful device that is basically a cell phone tester and uh, basically it's a machine that emulates a cell phone tower and uh, it has support for the analog cell phone network and allow analog cell phones to see a signal and the cell phones can also call the machine and the machine will answer and uh, it'll analyze all the uh, all the technicalities of the radio signal and such and the machine can also call the cell phone so you can uh, call, you know, your vintage analog cell phones and hear them ring once again. So, uh, I think it's absolutely amazing and I'm going to get one of those, I think, for Christmas. So for now, I think it is high time to introduce the 2013 version of my cell phone collection. Not much has changed in the past four years. Uh, I think there's just one uh, of the slightly old cell phones you've never seen before. But you might be able to see, I now have two more Motorola bag phones. Of course, Motorola bag phones are my favorite of all the vintage cell phones. And so I've grabbed, I've, I grabbed myself a couple more of those really cheaply. And uh, they are very cool and unique in their own ways. And so I'm going to be making, I'm not going to reveal them in this video. I'm going to be making individual videos of them as well as uh, of some of the other phones. So what do we got here? Well, we have uh, first and foremost my Motorola 2900 bag phone from 1994, um, which is uh, currently uh, using a Motorola 4500 transceiver from 1998, because the 4500 transceiver works just fine with the 2900 handset, but it also has more features. I'll be making an individual video of this phone. My two other bag phones, they will each have their own video as well. My Motorola Microtac 650E, this was actually one of the very first cell phones I ever got. This belonged to my grandparents. It was made sometime between 1995 and probably like 1998 or 99. I don't, don't really know when it was made. But uh, yes, this is still working just great. Next we have my Motorola Profile 300E. I do know that this one this one is from 1998. I used to say it was from 96. I recently found out that that is not the case. Um, both of these phones will have their own individual videos as well. I might put these two in the same video, I'm not sure. Next we have this Nokia 6016i from uh, 2005, I think. My friend Sean, who hates Pentiums but loves giving me cell phones, he gave me this. Um, this phone works fine, except it doesn't charge, so the charging circuitry is completely broke. This is, of course, a uh, CDMA cell phone, so you can still activate and use this today. Next is this Nokia 3285 from, I believe, 2001. 
Uh, I believe my cousin, my cousin gave dad this phone because he needed a cell phone. That was right after dad got rid of his own Motorola bag phone, which he had used for years. But dad thought the buttons were too small here, so he gave me this phone. And I gave him the MicroTac, which he used until 2005 or 6. And this phone works absolutely perfect. This is a CDMA cell phone, so uh, you can still activate this and use it today. Next, a Nokia 252, which comes with the manual. I got this at a yard sale for $5. I got it three or four years ago. And uh, I do believe it works, but the battery is completely shot, and for some reason, Nokia designed their phones such that you can't power them straight from the AC adapter. The battery still needs to be able to hold a charge, so I'm not able to power this on. This is an analog-only cell phone, by the way. I just accidentally discovered another phone that I had left somewhere else in here. This is an Ericsson DH618 from around 1998. This is actually a TDMA phone. Uh, TDMA, also known as Digital Amps, basically the digital version of the analog cell phone system, if that makes any sense. But uh, TDMA is also extinct, so this can't be used anymore. This phone does work. I don't have a charger for it, but uh, I have jerry-rigged a power supply to it. Just uh, just takes 6 volts, and uh, it, ha it does come on and work just fine, and it's in excellent condition as well. And came with the original uh, carry case, so that's pretty cool. This is uh, this was also given to me by my friend Sean. Next, this is a Nokia 1221 from, gosh, I don't know, probably 2002 or 2003. Came with the manual. I bought this at a yard sale in Calais, Maine, for five dollars. It is locked onto the American Track Phone prepaid network, so I can't use it. But uh, this phone is absolutely mint. Not a friggin' scratch on it, and probably because they kept it in the original case all its life. This phone's in beautiful shape. Battery's not that great anymore. It uh, still works fine, but uh, it only t you can only run it for about 10 hours before it goes dead. But uh, otherwise, a pretty nice phone. Uh, track phone's still in existence, so uh, I wonder, I would assume anyway, but I'm not sure if I could uh, go to Walmart, get a track phone card, and uh, use this phone still today. It is a uh, digital phone, so it still works just fine. Next, this is a Samsung SPH A580 from around 2006. This was also given to me by Sean. This was his old phone. And this phone is quite notable because it's my actual cell phone. Uh, I actually have this activated. I do use it. I activated it last summer, just before I went off to university. Uh, this phone is excellent. What an amazing phone. Um, it just calls and texts, but it does those two things uh, extremely well. And the battery's still great. And I have not only the original uh, AC adapter for it, but I also have a USB charger for it that a cousin of mine gave me that she thought was the charge cable for a Sony Walkman. Uh, it really makes no sense to me since the charger said Samsung right on it, but uh, whatever. Anyway, yes, this is my phone and uh, it's very great. Next, this is a Nokia 6585. I think Sean gave me this phone. Locked onto PC Mobile, which Sean used for a long time, maybe he still does. But uh, this phone works fine, except the loudspeaker is dead, so it can't ring. And uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, PC Mobile is actually the network that I'm using this phone on. Because this phone's of course locked to it, and uh, it's excellent, it's a prepaid network. And because I don't use this thing, I'm not addicted to it like... Uh, Many people nowadays are addicted to their phone. This thing costs me only five bucks a month to use, which is great because Canada has the worst cell phone rates on the planet. If I was on a monthly plan, I'd be paying probably thirty, forty dollars a month. Next, this is a Nokia twenty-two seventy-five from two thousand two or three. Sean also gave me this phone. I think he actually used this one at some point in time before he uh, used the Samsung. Uh, this phone works perfect, except it's got a chip in the in the uh, battery cover, and the battery cover has lost its little thingy that keeps it in place, so it just falls off. But uh, otherwise, this phone does work great, and it is a digital phone. All the digital phones here are CDMA. None of them are GSM. Next, this is a Nokia 3586 uh, from, I think, around 2003 or 4. I bought this at a yard sale for, I don't know, probably two or three bucks. And uh, this phone's interesting. Uh, if you might remember, I nicknamed this the Bud Phone because whoever owned this thing 
bought a freaking uh, marijuana themed cover for it. Uh, God almighty, leave it to someone in this town to buy a marijuana thing for their phone. God. And it also came with two extra keypads, uh, both of which are worn. Oh, this one's not worn, but this one is. And the original one is still okay. But, uh, yeah, this phone works absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with it. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, just for fun here, let's see uh, which of these can turn on. I know the MicroTac can turn on because the battery's still charged. The battery's still half good. Profile won't turn on. The battery's always been bad. And uh, if you look at the battery here, you can see that I've kind of mutilated it. Um, I, I had a hypothesis that this probably used standard size cells, which I was right. It just uses NICAD AAA cells, five of them. So I thought, well, if I can take the battery part, I can put new NICAD AAAs in it. Or whatever cells it had at the time, I didn't know. But uh, it turns out that Motorola really sealed these things. And uh, yeah, I kind of destroyed it uh, trying to get it open. So it's kind of like this now. Luckily, it still does go back on the phone like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's been mutilated. If they sealed the batteries for these phones, there's a company uh, uh, in the next town here who uh, replaces cells in batteries. And I remember many years ago, Dad told me that uh, they said they could replace the cells in these MicroTac batteries. But uh, how could they if you have to destroy the battery to get in it? I don't know. Maybe Dad was uh, uh, assuming. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so yeah, MicroTac turns on. No service, obviously. Will the 3586 turn on? No, nope, I would say the battery is dead. Will this one turn on? Yes, it will. Animation. This one should turn on. It has a very good battery in it. Yeah. This one doesn't have a good battery, so it'll probably not... Oh, well, how about that? Okay, so the battery still holds its charge, it just doesn't hold a lot of charge. Airtime card due 2005. I'll get right on there. 252 won't turn on. Will this one turn on? Because the battery's still good. Yeah, that turns on. Will this one turn on? I think it should. No, I guess the battery's dead in this one too. And of course, my phone's already turned on. So, there you go. Um, here's the thing. Like I said, many of these phones I don't really care for. The point of my whole cell phone collection was to be for vintage Motorola phones. So I want to get rid of a lot of these phones. So what I'll do right now is I'll separate these phones into ones which I do want and ones which I don't. Yep, this pretty much sums it up. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do with these phones is I'm going to see what kind of money I can get for them. Um, I know ones like the 3285, which works absolutely perfect. Uh, the track phone one, um, yeah, those are pretty much the only two that work perfect. Oh, and the bud phone. So uh, those ones I should be able to get at least a few bucks for. As for the rest, I don't know. Well, the 252 here is vintage, so, uh, and it's in great shape, so it might get some money, although whoever buys it will have to uh, buy a new battery to turn it on. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to see what kind of money I can get for these phones. Probably won't happen until next year, because i got to get back to school soon, move into my apartment and everything. But, uh, yeah, eventually I'm going to be getting rid of them, because I don't really care about them at all. I just remembered, I, there was another phone. I forgot about that. I'll be right back. Ta-da! This is a Samsung SPHA860. Uh, this was actually Dad's cell phone. This was the last cell phone he had, and uh, it works absolutely perfect. It's in good shape, just a couple of dings, but uh, let's we'll see if the battery held a charge here. Yeah, sure does. I guess it ain't gonna, ain't gonna sing, but uh, I'm actually keeping this phone too. Why isn't the screen lit up? Why did it turn off? Oh, the battery must be dead, perhaps. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be keeping this phone because if something ever happens to this one, this will be the one I use. Uh, so yeah, keeping that one too.
And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I know I've repeated this already, but I don't know if I finished. Uh, I'm going to see what I can get out of all these phones. And then uh, I think uh, just, you know, once in a great while, buy another vintage Motorola to add to my collection. Because I really love the vintage Motorola phones. Uh, some I'd like to get. I'd like to get an older MicroTac. Um, I'd like to get one or two other bag phones. Um, there's like 30 or 40 iterations of the bag phone. I have three of them now. But uh, there are a couple others that I think are really unique and uh, I'd like to get a hold of. Um, I wouldn't mind getting uh, one of the Dynatac phones too. I'd really love to get one of those. So uh, yeah, I'll just have to uh, wait and see what comes along. And uh, there, there's one other phone, uh, it's a more modern Motorola that I'd love to get. It's a Motorola Timeport P8767, which is very notable in that it has uh, an organic LED display, an OLED display, and it was actually the very first consumer electronic device uh, offered on the market with an OLED display, and uh, it's a really beautiful display. Uh, it's exactly like the StarTac phones, except it has that great display. And uh, if I got a hold of one, I would use it with my main phone, but the problem is, StarTacs weren't capable of sending text messages until the very last version of the software, and uh, nobody seems to know how to upgrade the software of a StarTac phone. So, uh, although I'd like one of those uh, uh, TimePort phones, or even a newer StarTac with just the regular LCD display, um, and it can be activated, uh, I don't know if it would be very useful because I do need te uh, texting and uh, something that is enabled to send text isn't actually that useful to me. So that's pretty much it for the 2013 version of my cell phone collection. If I ever make another uh, update in 2014 or 15 or whatever, it's probably going to be a lot smaller because hopefully I'll be rid of all those phones. This summer, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see uh, three videos of all three of these bag phones. And you might see a video of the MicroTac and the Profile as well. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.